Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about the light reactions, which are the first set of reactions in photosynthesis. So there are actually two sets of reactions. Remember when we did cellular respiration, there were three main parts, photosynthesis, there's only two. Hey, see, simple. Um, so the first set of reactions are called light dependent reactions or just light reactions. Uh, these are going to capture the energy in light and transform that light energy into stored energy in the form of NADPH and ATP. If you're thinking, wait, hang on, wasn't it NADH in uh, cellular respiration? It was. Um, we have a slightly different coenzyme here in photosynthesis. Same function, it's going to be a proton slash electron carrier. So we're going to do the light reactions. Those obviously depend on light. And then the light independent reactions, or the Calvin cycle, uh, are going to use that stored energy from NADPH and ATP to uh, do another set of uh, chemical reactions and make sugars. OK, so uh, these are the two sets. We're going to do uh, the light reactions first in this video, and then the next video will be the Calvin cycle. All right, so let's look at this photosystem that is embedded in the thylakoid membrane. Remember now we're inside the chloroplast. A photon, which is a particle of light with energy, remember photon light has energy depending on the wavelength. The photon is going to land on a pigment molecule that is embedded in this uh, protein complex in the thylakoid membrane. When it does that, that energy actually excites an electron. And if you, like me, thought, is the electron like jumping up and down in excitement? Actually, kind of. Uh, an excited electron goes from its normal state, what we call the ground state, to a higher energy state. And then very, very quickly, like within a millionth of a second, uh, goes back down to its ground state. When it goes up to the higher energy state, it is absorbing a little bit of energy. As it falls back down to the ground state, it gives off that energy. So this momentary uh, energy in the electron is what we're going to be passing along from one pigment molecule to the next. Okay. Notice the electron does not leave the atom. Okay. The electron stays in the atom. It just gets excited for a second. Okay. And then it chills back down. All right, so the energy from the excited electrons, from the energy from light excites an electron, that energy from the excited electron gets passed from one pigment molecule to the next. And these uh, proteins are actually kind of shaped like an antenna, focusing the energy down to this spot right here. There are two molecules of chlorophyll A, which are special chlorophyll A's. They're not like the rest of the chlorophyll A's. Um, these, when they receive this energy from the excited electron, they actually become oxidized. And you remember being oxidized means losing an electron. So each of these then loses an electron. The electron is passed to the cleverly named electron acceptor. I know, I know, they really went all out on that one. The electron acceptor accepts the electron. Notice this is a primary electron acceptor. If that suggests that there's going to be another electron acceptor, well, you're right. There is. I know. Aren't those names cool? They mean stuff. Okay, so the light, the energy from the photon has been transformed into energy from excited electrons that got passed along to the chlorophyll molecules, which got passed to another electron that actually leaves this special chlorophyll molecule. Aren't these also chlorophyll molecules? Yeah, chlorophyll, carotenoids, anthocyanins, any of those. Um, these special chlorophyll molecules are special because they get oxidized. Okay, if something gets oxidized, remember it's not in that happy state or a stable state, it's gonna need to be reduced. So let's talk about what's going to happen there. But first, let's look at this, all of this stuff here. So we already talked about how we have um, a bunch of transmembrane proteins, and then we have our good old friend ATP synthase. And it, so if you looked at this and you thought, hang on, that just really looks kind of like the electron transport chain and cellular respiration. Yeah, it does. And guess what? It's an electron transport chain. <laughs> so guess what it's going to do? It's going to it's going to transport electrons. 
I know. I love it when names make sense. Okay, so the electrons from these chlorophyll molecules, they're going to get passed along this electron transport chain. They're going to get replaced, haha, -ha, um, by electrons from water. So the first complex that light hits is called photosystem two. I know. It's the first and it's photosystem two. Yes, it was discovered second. Photosystem one was discovered first, even though in this chain it comes second. Okay, the names don't always, aren't always perfect. Okay, so photosystem two passes the electron from chlorophyll to an electronic acceptor. In this case, it's called pheophyton. You don't need to know that name. Uh, but it's represented by this PQ here. Uh, the PQ carries the electron, transport the electron to another protein complex. So these chlorophylls that have been oxidized, they need to be reduced. And in order to do that, a water molecule is gonna come along. Uh, it's gonna get split. The electrons come off of the hydrogens and we end up with half an oxygen gas and two hydrogen ions. This half an, an oxygen gas is going to bind with another half an oxygen gas. And if you're thinking, isn't that just a no? Yeah, it is. Um, they're going to make an O2 again. So we have oxygen gas again. And that's the waste product that the plants make. Now, plants make more O2 that they can, than they can use, but they do cellular respiration. They have mitochondria too. So they're gonna use this oxygen for their own aerobic cellular respiration, but they make more than they can use. So they're also going to need to get rid of this oxygen. The hydrogen ions are gonna stay inside the lumen of this thylakoid. And if you think you're thinking, hey, wait a minute, doesn't that look like a concentration gradient? Yes, it does. Okay, so what happens next? The electron acceptor, uh, plastoquinine PQ, uh, passes the electron to the cytochrome complex. In doing that, it uses the electron's energy to push four hydrogen ions across the membrane into the lumen, creating more of that concentration gradient. The cytochrome complex then passes the electrons to plastocyanin PC, uh, which then passes the electrons to special chlorophyll molecules in photosystem one. Now, if you're thinking, hang on, isn't that kind of what happened in photosystem two? Yeah. The difference is what the electron acceptor is and where the electrons come from. That's the difference between the two photosystems. So photosystem one uh, does receive light energy. Um, the light energy excites the electrons. We pass that uh, energy along to another pair of special chlorophyll molecules and they become oxidized, lose electrons. Those electrons are replaced by the electrons from the electron transport chain. So photosystem one doesn't split water. Photosystem two splits water, okay? Photosystem one hands off the electrons to another electron carrier. Uh, this one can only carry one electron at a time. So it's just like, and that, those electrons get passed to a uh, protein called NADP plus reductase, which, clever name, reduces NADP plus. And if you're thinking, hang on, if add it, isn't adding an H, adding a proton yeah it 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 puts the whole hydrogen back together the electron and the proton and we end up with nadph okay um so we have the electron the nadp plus getting reduced um to nadph remember we're most concerned at this point about the electrons because those are our little balls of energy all right now Finally, in this step of the light reactions, we're going to make ATP synthase. So we have this, the two photosystems um, passing along electrons to reduce NADPH and to create this hydrogen ion concentration gradient. The NADPH is going to get used later in the Calvin cycle in the light independent reactions. 
this hydrogen uh, concentration gradient is going to be used exactly the way it is in the mitochondria. The hydrogen are going to flow through ATP synthase and make ATP. Now, I know you're thinking, hang on a second, I thought we were making sugars. Why are we making ATP? Because you got to make ATP in order to have the energy to make the sugars. So, yes, plants do cellular respiration to make ATP. They also do the light reactions to make ATP. Lots of ATP. Why? Because there's stuff going on all the time. They're not just making glucose. They're making polymers of glucose, starch and uh, cellulose. They're building themselves larger. They're making flowers. They're creating pigments. They got a lot of work to do. Okay. So they need a lot of ATP. All right. So that is our light. Those are our light reactions. The photosystems getting the energy from the excited electrons oxidizing special chlorophyll molecules, transporting electrons, making the hydrogen concentration gradient, and then using that concentration gradient to make ATP and NADPH, well, not the concentration gradient for NADPH, the electrons for NADPH, and then splitting water to create hydrogen ions and oxygen. All right, in the next section, we're gonna talk about the light independent reactions uh, in the Calvin cycle. I can stop this. Come on.